Her Sports Six Nation Show in association with Opal. Hello and welcome to episode two of the Her Sports Six Nations show brought to you by Opal, the exclusive car partner to the IRFU. You can catch up on this episode and every episode in the series on YouTube and our social channels or listen to the podcast on every podcast app. I'm joined once again in studio by Hannah Tyrrell who had a score prediction for 29-10 for an Ireland win. Obviously we know the result in the end was a 27-19 win to Wales. What do you make of the game? Yeah, look, um, I still think that Ireland were capable of um, winning against the, uh, against Wales the weekend, but unfortunately, you know, the their performance wasn't quite maybe where the girls wanted it to be, and they came out on the wrong side of it. Uh, full credit to Wales, you know, I thought they put in a, a very good performance, you know, and you can see they were delighted uh, when the full time whistle mm -hmm. went um, to get that victory. And obviously they had some very dangerous players on the pitch, like the Jazz Joyce uh, in there. I thought player of the match, Alicia Bushers, was really, really good for them. But um, yeah, probably a disappointing result for Ireland, you know, and they've a lot to work on this week heading into the France game, which we know will be a, a very, very difficult challenge. And, you know, they have to kind of forget about the Wales game in some way, you know, take their learnings from it and push on and focus on the next task, you know, and, and, and see what they can do against this very big, very powerful French team. And before we go to into what went right and what went wrong, the reception from the game, although it was a loss, it has been quite good reception, would you say? Yeah, look, even just being there myself at the game, I thought the atmosphere in general was, was incredible. And to have the sport there uh, from all the fans was, was great to see. And it really kind of felt like a new era, that new campaign that they brought in. And the fans, fans brought the noise and, and the players are all commenting on social media about how good it was. And, you know, even afterwards, I do think um, the media and people were very positive about it. Look, it is a disappointing result and I'm sure the players will tell you that themselves. But... A lot of people have realised that this is a new beginning and we can't expect, you know, uh, miracles and perfect performances overnight. It was the very first game that they played in under a new coach, new systems, new setup, a lot of new players in that squad. So it will take time for, for things to gel and get it right. Um, but, but there are things to work on um, and the players know that. And thankfully, there's loads more games to play. And before we get into the upcoming game as well, we want to show you all at home your support for the girls in green as they travel to France for round two of the TikTok Six Nations Championship. We want you to send us in photos of where you'll be watching the game this weekend and you'll be in the chance of winning a signed Irish rugby jersey. Send your photos to us on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag, hashtag HerSportSixNations. So obviously the main takeaway from the game is we were up by half time and then suddenly it went wrong. From you watching the game at the match, what do you think went wrong? Look, there's a couple of areas that uh, the team can improve on. As you said, um, at half time we were up 14-10, uh, I think it was, you know, and a big positive I suppose to take at half time was that Wales had the majority of possession, yet we went in with the lead. And so we didn't have the ball very much, we didn't have very many opportunities, but when the opportunities came along, we actually took our score very, very well. And I actually think we left a couple of scores out there by not moving the ball enough. But I suppose um, when you end up uh, on the wrong side of the possession stats, you end up defending an awful lot. And defending is very, very tiring. Um, and I suppose that kind of got to us a bit when we saw that with Wales only actually taking the lead in the match from the 71st or 72nd minute or something like that. And that is quite disheartening to be leading the match the whole way through, you know, and then all of a sudden, very, very close towards the end of the match, you don't have that lead anymore and you're kind of scrambling for, for opportunities to try and score and stuff like that. But a couple of areas I think that they'll be focusing it on uh, this week um, heading into the France game will definitely be set piece. Um, you know, we highlighted before that the front row in general is is quite inexperienced. I know Linda Jugang is there and she's been there a while and she was excellent the weekend. But um, Katie O'Dwyer has only a couple of caps to her name. Neve Jones the same. And I don't think our line-out functioned as well as it could have. Yeah. You know, and we, we lost the ball or turned over the ball a couple of times um, just when we were building momentum and kind of gave that energy back to Wales. 
you know, and that can be really disheartening as a player. Like you've won a really good uh, turnover or penalty, you've kicked a touch and you're ready to kind of start building a platform to get into the Welsh half. And unfortunately, the line out doesn't go to plan. And for me personally, you know, I was back um, and I haven't spoken to any of those players about it. So I'm not sure whether it was a an overthrow uh, from Neve Jones or whether it was a mix up or a bad lift um, or a combination of both. Mm -hmm particularly for the line out not to go to plan but like you're just gifting possession to the other team and it is so disheartening and you have to defend again and that takes it out of you and similarly in the scrum we didn't really get good ball off the scrum and even when we managed to hold on to our own ball uh, from the scrum the ball was a bit slow and we were under a lot of pressure and you know we're not a very big uh, team you know weight wise or kind of physicality wise and that's going to be a massive pressure. You know, Wales aren't massively big either, um, but like looking towards the France game, they are big and they are mm -hmm. physical and they are going to look at our line out, they're going to look at our scrum, they're going to look at our mall and they're going to target those areas, uh, seeing them as areas of weakness for us. And, and historically for Ireland, the set piece has been um, a huge strength for us. And I'm not saying all of a sudden we've, you know, our set piece isn't great. Mm -hmm just needs tweaking you know and they'll, they'll go into camp and they'll look at that and they'll all review the footage and hopefully they can sort that out because you gift possession to France uh, like they did uh, against Wales you know this weekend you're asking for trouble because because France will do damage and it's interesting there what you're saying that it's not necessarily that the pack was much bigger because Neve Briggs actually on a conference call said that it wasn't down to the power, it was just down to purely their experience. Would you agree with that? Yeah, look, again, I'm a back, so I don't know the full workings and ins and outs of the scrums. And look, strength and weight does come into it, but there's so much more to scrum. Like scrum, scrummaging is a... a, a it's a technique thing mainly like you know you can have a big huge powerful prop that's much heavier than um, the prop on the other side but if their technique is all wrong it's not going to work for you you know it can be an advantage but it's very much technique it's very much knowing the little tricks of the trade in order to to help your team and help your uh, your group or your forwards as an eight work together and, and something just seemed a little off there and again it might just be that these players haven't played enough together or they're trying to get used to a new scrummaging technique or you know new calls or going into it and it could be a number of these factors and as I said they need to iron these out over the next couple of games. Mm -hmm. And the team overall obviously last week we discussed what you thought the team could or should be yeah. what did you make of the final starting 15 that that lined out? Yeah look much like my prediction it was all wrong um, but you know a couple of uh, surprises on my like on in my opinion, um, I thought Avian Riley at nine was a surprise for me. I, I, I thought that uh, Greg McWilliams would go for experience at nine. Yeah, first cap for your debut, it's yeah. big. And look, <laughs> she clearly has impressed in camp, you know, and each player, and, and I suppose that's what I really am loving about uh, Greg is that he's giving people the opportunity. If they're performing well in the AL League, they've got into the squad, and if they're performing well in trainings in the squad and camps, He's given them opportunities and clearly Avian Riley has been doing something right that he, he chose to pick her. I um, think it was a little bit of a difficult game for her. She probably was very nervous as you do on your debut, you know, and it was a new pairing at 9 and 10, um, you know. and What did you make of that 9 and 10 duo? Um, again, it's a work in progress, you know. I think we need to be a lot more dominant in terms of how we control the play you know it is our halfbacks who direct how we're going to play our nine needs to be able to move our forwards around and get them putting in the work to provide good clean ball for our backs and then we need Nicole Cronin to be um, basically barking out orders and again demanding the ball choosing the right options and executing that and you know they did all right you know and again it was a, a tough game for everybody a first game back in Nicole hasn't played 10 for Ireland before so that was a a learning curve for her and I've no doubt that they will regroup have a chat about it and, and move on to, to this week's game but um, there was a lot of learnings to take from that game you know and I don't think they were particularly impressive mm -hmm. but it, it was their first time together so there was plenty of time to improve.
And who would have been your key players from the match? Obviously, we had Sam Monaghan had a good game. Stacey Flood, um, I think the centre suited her there. What did, who would be your players that you'd take? Yeah, look, there was a couple of players who really stood up and put their hand up and, and put in the work and kind of gave us opportunities to win the game. I thought Linda Dugang led from the front really, really well. She obviously scored that incredible try uh, set up by Sam Monaghan, who just, I thought, was sublime. Mm -hmm. You know, if we went on to win that match, she would have been my player of the match. Um, she, I asked for viral videos and clips, and she gave me one of those with the offload. Um, and she had a couple of offloads going through, but even just her work rate in the line out and the carries, making tackles, hitting rocks, you know, I thought she was a real leader there. And, um, it was just great to see her step up because that was her first Six Nations game. You know, she only got her first cap in the World Cup uh, qualifying campaign. So she, again, is relatively inexperienced, but playing over in England for Wasps and that's really benefiting her. And you can see that. And she just brought huge physicality, which we kind of had been lacking. Mm -hmm. um, and I also thought, as you said, 12 or inside centre really suited Stacey Flood. I thought, you know, she has everything in her game. She can pass, she can kick. She can jackal, you know, she's well able to tackle. We saw a couple of dominant tackles from her. And I just thought she led that back line really, really well and set up a try or scored a try, um, you know, and just gives us an extra option for kicking. And she's also a left footer. Mm -hmm. um, we saw a couple of skip passes. She has a beautiful pass, probably the best on the team. And it, it just allows us to free up our wingers a little bit quicker, having her out in the centres as opposed to... Uh, one one position in at 10 so I thought she was really really good and again Amy Lee Murphy Crow knows where the try line is you know give her the ball and she will score and what did you make of her try yeah it was a great try look she's uh, once she got past Jazz Joyce there in the wing I knew she was going to score and um, but I don't think we got her the ball enough there was another opportunity for her to get her hands on the ball I think at in one point um in the first half and I think we carried instead and there was a couple of decision making like that where there were opportunities to move it wide like we I think Baven didn't really get the ball too much either when she came yeah, on Yeah that's it like our back line is electric you know and and they they performed quite well I thought Eve Higgins did great as well she had some super carries super tackles again and knows when to pass and when to hold on to it and we just didn't see enough of it I think we actually kicked quite a lot in the game and um, like we had one time where we had won a penalty, we kicked to touch, um, we won the line out really, really well. And instead of using that amazing back line that we have, we kicked straight up, we box kicked straight off nine. And I just thought that was a, an unusual tactic. And I don't know, maybe it was a, I presume it was pre-called and maybe it's a tactic that Greg wants to play to put the backfield under pressure. But when you have the likes of Stacey Flood and Lucy Mulhall and Amy Lee Murphy Crow out there, why not try it? And if you go and use a move and it doesn't work, then we can box kick and go from there. So, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. You're right. Baven came on and probably didn't have the impact that she wanted to through no fault of her own. Yeah. Just because we we did not have. And there was a, a big the cheer as well for when I think everyone thought you know she's on now, but she didn't really get too much touches yeah, on the ball. Absolutely. Look, she's a superstar in the game, and you know I. I was uh, in and amongst the crowd pre-game and chatting to some fans and uh, Baven Parsons was the name on everyone's lips because she has the ability to change a game and we all were hoping and expecting we could see some of her magic and her speed but we ended up not having the ball enough to give it to her you know and that's the problem when you have these incredible players out wide unless you get them the ball they're obsolete mm -hmm. you know and they, they're no like there are no benefit to us um, and so we need to find ways to get the likes of Baven and to get Amy Lee the ball so that we can score tries because as we saw in the first half we gave it to Lee and she's, she scored a super try from it. Mm -hmm. And I think the overall stats for the game we had a 31% possession so we have a clip here of Greg McWilliams just discussing what that meant for the team with so little possession. I think our defensive shape was good I think our energy to get back in the game defend you know, we defended for such long periods of time, it does take it out of a team. And I felt that their bench came on and added real strength and an impact, um, and we couldn't cope with it. But again, like everything else now, as a, as a coaching group and as a player group, we got to own that performance as well. Uh, so impressed and, and proud of, of uh, the, you know, everything from the crowd to the day that we had was fantastic. But we all need to be collectively better. And um, you know, I, I think we need to be smart about how we're going to do that this week in preparation for France.
Um, it's pretty obvious that uh, there's ways of counteracting them all, whether that's how you set up uh, from the line out or whether it's the actions as soon as, as the, the jumper hits the deck. But there's certainly areas that we'll work on around our mall defence. We, we, we have to. Those are those areas that, that was exposed. I think in the scrum as well, but continue to work on our scrum. I think there's been some really good uh, sessions being done by Rob. I think the scrum is going the right direction. Um, and, you know, I think you just want to get hold of the ball a bit more and, and hold on to it for longer periods because we're trying to play a fast pace. They slowed it down a little bit. Um, and we need to just be a bit more assertive into holding on to the ball and playing the way that we want to play in attack. But really proud about what we did defensively. Like anything else, you've got a plan in place. There's times you doubt yourself, you know, like there's times for the last month I'm doubting, you know, the direction it goes in because you always do and you should, I think. And, and you want to be challenged by your coaching group and you want to be challenged by the players. So to see what I've been working on come through and it was really effective when it was on gives us enough to, to say, you know what, we're going the right direction, particularly defensively. I mean, our defensive shape, I was so happy with because it's something that we put a lot of effort into. And like anything else, again, 31% possession, defending for long periods, tired bodies, their subs came on and were strong. They kept us in our own half. We couldn't get out of, we couldn't get out. Our exits were poor. Uh, so we'll do work around our exits and make sure we tie those up for the next game. He mentioned there again the scrum, which we've touched on, but particularly that mall. It was identified early by Wales as a weakness and then they just kept kicking to the corner and we were at the disadvantage there. What do you think we could have done to prevent that? Well, the first thing you do is you don't give them a line out. Mm -hmm. Like, it's as simple as that. You can only have a mall, well, not only have a mall, but the majority of malls tend to come from line outs and Wales, as you said, exposed it early on that that was a weakness uh, for this Irish team. And unfortunately, we had, uh, we, we gave a lot of penalties away. We, as, as Greg mentioned, our exits were quite poor. So they were getting um, opportunities for line outs within our 22. Mm -hmm. And they kept driving our mall, like using their mall and we couldn't keep batting. And they were just getting gain line and gain line. And even when they didn't score from our mall or from their mall, they were putting... Ireland under severe pressure and forcing us to scramble in other areas of um, our defence and then we were just left exposed out wide and unfortunately it cost us and they got that try uh, laid on to kind of seal the deal in the game but um, it is nice to hear that he's obviously going to work on that because France will target that among other areas for it but um, yeah, look, it's it's just something that they will be disappointed in because Wales have been historically strong in the line-out and in the mall and, and we need to be better and smarter about realising and not giving them opportunities to actually use that mall to their advantage. And it must be very frustrating. At one point, the camera sort of focused in on Dorothy Wall and she was just getting really frustrated when they were called again for a penalty. What was the reason for all the penalties, do you think? Especially there, there was the scrum, also in the rucks as well. Look, it's just... Uh, Discipline is huge in rugby and like we all know that discipline just or like uh, ill discipline just gives teams opportunities to march up the field, to kick to the corner and um, to have another crack at us and it puts us on the back foot every single time and that is frustrating as a player because when you play rugby, yes tackling is great and all that but you want the ball too and when you keep being ill disciplined and don't have the ball, you know, you, it it fatigues you, it annoys you, it frustrates you and your decision making and stuff like that just comes under immense pressure. Penalty wise, there was a number of, of different ones. Obviously we had the scrum penalty. Um, a lot of the times we actually carried into, like we had possession and we turned it over because our, our cleaners weren't there or we didn't get rid of the jackal threat enough. Other times, you know, it's that we have hands in the rook or we're kind of forcing it a little bit. So sometimes like when teams have or are giving away too many penalties, we kind of make a call and be like, right, that's it, no more penalties, because we're just giving them energy, so we're not gonna contest in the rooks. And we're gonna make sure that we're supporting each other on, on breaks or on carries so that they don't get a sniff and get a penalty from us. Um, and again, that's just game management. And maybe that's where Ireland were lacking that little bit of experience, mm -hmm. you know, um, that we talked about last week in that, Again, we weren't on the pitch, so we don't know, but was somebody on the pitch being like, guys, that's way too many penalties. We need to stop this. You know, let's just ice it is usually the call. Like, don't go into the rooks or don't, you know, don't even try to take the ball over. Just get our defensive line set so we can be 
organize and put them on the back foot and um, was somebody doing that i really hope so but again, we kept giving away the penalties and Emer Constantine paid the price at the end with the yellow card because of it. And as a player on the pitch when you're down to 14 men, what's that feeling like? You know, it's something that teams do practice um, because you know it is a possibility. Um, again, that one was for uh, continuous penalties and slowing down the ball and everything else and not rolling away. Um, it is frustrating, as I said, you're stretched very, very thin and, and teams try to use that opportunity to, to take advantage and score. Uh, as a player on the other side, you need to be just very, very focused again, trying not to stick bodies in the rook, getting people in the line so that you can basically create a green wall so that when Wales or whatever team it is come to attack, all they see are green shirts ready to tackle you and ready to try to take the ball off you. Um, and it's about trying to slow things down so that the 10 minutes goes by as quickly as possible. Wales, on the other hand, are, were clever and when they had the yellow card, they were trying to up the tempo. They were trying to go quickly, they were getting set ready so that they would be prepared and they can use their 10 minutes wisely. Mm -hmm. But it, it, is a, it is frustrating to go down to 14. It gives other teams an opportunity. When you've been defending for most of the game anyway and then you go down to 14, it makes it exceptionally difficult. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we saw that with um, the Hannah Jones try for Wales at the back of the scrum. We were missing a player. We defensively got our wires crossed and we had uh, two different players doing two different defensive um, drills or opportunities. And it, they got a try from it because we were not on the same page. And Neve Briggs after the game said the team are going to focus on reading the ref and the game more. And I suppose that comes with not giving away as much penalties. But in terms of playing in front of a crowd, that was cited as one of the reasons, you know, making the play more frantic. Do you think, would you have agreed with that? Um, I do agree with her comments on the ref in that different, like the laws of the game are the same, but refs have a little bit of different interpretations on it. And if a ref is... You know, if you're being called for not rolling away quick enough and the ref has called two or three people for that, you realise that's an area she's really focusing on and you need to work really, really hard to show that you're rolling away. And do you think that's something Ireland way. didn't do? Yes, in some ways. I don't know. Again, is that the experience? Is that somebody being like, ref is constantly calling, mm -hmm. you know, not rolling away your hands in the rook or sometimes like for getting a jackal on some refs want you to be on the ball for four or five seconds before they give you the penalty other refs after one or two seconds like i don't know um with ireland i'm, I'm hoping that they can improve on that this week and um, but you do have to read the ref you have to see what she's looking out for um in that instance and uh, unfortunately we maybe weren't as aware of that as we could have been but in terms of being frantic, I think towards the end of the game, we again, we didn't have the ball very much, but you do become very aware that there's not much time left and mm -hmm. you have to get the ball back and you have to score if you want to win. So there does become an element of that kind of franticness about it. But I think a lot of it was nerves and that almost nearly excitement to get going and playing uh, is what we saw at the weekend. And again, you couple that in with the new management, new players, all that. It just didn't work for us and it just didn't click. And on some days it does click and other days it doesn't. And Saturday was one of those days that just things just didn't go quite right for us. Um, and the, as I said, the players will be a little bit unhappy with that. But as I keep saying, there's loads of games to come, which is great for us to watch and, and great for them to to learn from it. But Saturday is a, a big test against the French and we'll see have they have they learned from their mistakes. And in terms of Saturday, we obviously, the team is yet to be announced, but in terms of the bench for last Saturday, Greg mentioned it there, how they utilise their bench. We obviously, we had Neve Jones play the full 80 minutes. Hannah O'Connor, I read on Twitter after that they felt it was an insult to her for her to only get 30 seconds. Bavin didn't, she came on, but she didn't get much touch of the ball. What do you make of us using the bench? Yeah, look, I don't think, our bench had a, as much of an impact as um, we would have liked. You know, the whole point of the bench is to bring much needed energy and, you know, and just do the work in a shorter space of time that the rest of the team have done in, say, the first half and just finish out the game and continue on with the plays and the tactics that, um, you know, the team have been doing all game and just to, to see it out and get that victory. And, 
you know, different players have different impacts. You look at Baven and you're hoping she comes on and gets lots of meters for her team and good carries and maybe manages to get away, break a couple of tackles. Someone like Hannah O'Connor coming on, you're looking for her to steady the ship a little bit, maybe steady the base of the scrum and um, just put her tackles in and kind of do the, the hard yards in order to open up that space for Baven. But like, we had two players on the bench who, who didn't come on at all, mm -hmm. you know, and that's very, that's quite rare in, in rugby, to be honest. And as you say, for a front rower to play 80 minutes, you know, that can be quite disheartening for the player on the bench, but it, it, it also like begs the question, like, well, why didn't he play her? Did he... Did he not trust her? Did he not think it was the right environment? But if he didn't think it was the right environment, why did he put her on the bench? You know, and then again, in, unfortunately in that position, you know, nothing on the players. Emma Hooban, well able to play rugby and stuff like that. But if he has her on the bench and he's not keen to play her, you know, Kleena Maloney is, you know, someone else he admitted there. Would he have played Kleena Maloney if it was her on the bench? You know, and... I hate to keep bringing up her name, but she is available for selection there and in front row was an area of weakness for us. So I do wonder, you know, is he thinking about it? Is he talking to her in the background? I don't know. Um, but uh, their bench definitely had a much bigger impact uh, than ours did. And do you and think that was because they brought them on sooner? They started making regular changes? I don't know. Look, sometimes, you know, it's the players themselves that... Um, make or give themselves an opportunity when they come on and the work they put in as you said Hannah O'Connor didn't have time to impact the game Baven Parsons wasn't on the ball to impact the game should she have gone looking for a little bit more work maybe but again we have to be getting her the ball so she couldn't have the impact that we would have liked because we didn't have the ball as a team mm -hmm. you know um and it's just difficult. Like Chloe Pierce got in there, and you know I've trained with Chloe loads of times, and I think she's she's a great player in the loose. Um, but again, put the work in and stuff like that. But we didn't have a player come off the bench who I really felt like changed the tone of the game. And it might have been that they they didn't have enough time that we, you know, didn't have the ball enough for them to be able to have that impact. But uh, we need to have a huge impact for our bench this weekend because France have an in incredibly strong squad, you know, and their players, um, you look at uh, Sansus who came off the bench for them, usually a starter for some reason, uh, off the bench this weekend, and she had a massive impact for France. She actually finished the game with the highest um, meters in total for anyone on the pitch at all, and she only came on for the last 30 minutes. You know, she had an impact, she got to try herself at the end, and I think she set up... Um, another try but she was a constant menace and we want somebody who can come on and change the game and put the other team on the back foot a little bit and get them thinking and give our team that little bit of lift and an energy and you know hopefully this weekend we can we can do that mm -hmm. so we'll get into about this weekend's game but first of all we'll just have a look at Nicola Friday's reaction after the match her first match that she's actually captain for the team yeah, look, I'm hugely proud of the girls. Like the performance we put out there, like there was glimpses of really positive stuff for us. We'll take our learnings from the things that didn't quite go well, but like the girls left absolutely everything out in that pitch. And for me, that's what I said at the start of the game to to empty the tanks and make sure that we come in knowing we we did everything we could, and that's what the girls did. So, look, I'm proud of them for that. And look, we'll take our learnings and move on. Yeah, look, I think at certain parts of that game, you saw glimpses of the style of tackling play that we're trying to play. Like we have. We have serious backs and then you look into the pack that we have extremely skillful players like that's offload from Sam to Linda for that try like that's that's something you dream of as a forward um, so look like there was there is huge positives and yeah look Wales did exactly what we said they would do their their power game is, is something that's they're known for and and maybe that little bit of experience that they had but look that we still had positive patches in that game and I'm, I'm really proud of the girls for sticking into it, sticking it with it and not giving up towards the end. And look, we'll, we'll, we'll move on and we have France next week. So um, we have no choice but to kind of put our heads down now and get, make, make fixes and get, get going, focus on next week. Yeah, exactly. Like um, that's we want to be making sure that we're making those gain lines. And look, I suppose our discipline was probably something that let us down today. So that's going to be a focus on next week. You can't be giving away those sort of penalties to a French team because they'll they'll crucify you for that so for us now we have to go back and look at what we can implement for next week and just take our learnings from this match so before we look at the game now against France what was your positives from the game just in a few sentences um I 
think our offloading game was great. The fact that we're actually looking for those, um, you know, because they're the opportunities where you kind of get line breaks from them. So I thought that was great. And look, I do think our defensive shift was very, very good. I think we put in over 150 tackles compared to Wales's 99, I think it was. So like, it's great to be able to see them. Um, I'd love to see more dominant tackles, but you know, I thought that was great. And, and as you said, like the work rate was there. Um, you know, Adele McMahon put in a huge shift there and there is there is plenty of positives. I think the biggest positive to take is that in the first half, they had two opportunities really uh, with very little possession and we got two super tries out of it. You know, we just need to create more of those opportunities because like two opportunities, two tries, that's a huge return, it's 100%. So, you know, um, we need to create more of those opportunities if we want to put it up to France this weekend because two tries won't cut it for them. <laughs> So coming up next, I sat down with Maeve O'Gallery to discuss the mood in camp, how the team has bounced back from the loss to Wales and turning their attention to their next challenge, France in Paris. After that, I'll be back in studio with Hannah Tyrrell, but a quick reminder that you're listening to the Her Sports Six Nations show brought to you in association with Opal, the exclusive car partner to the IRFU. So looking ahead to this Saturday's game, would you like to see an unchanged team or do you think new people should come in? Yeah, look, um, I think selection is always difficult for players as well. Like, as I said, um, those bench players who maybe didn't get as many minutes as they want would be raring to go. I think the most obvious um, person that people would want to see in is Baven Parsons. Um, however, I don't know if we'll see her. Look, I think she's excellent. I think we should have her in there. But... Again, where do you put her? I thought Lucy Mulhall played very well last week, although she did leave the field with uh, a HIA, so whether she's back or not, I'm not sure. Uh, Amy Lee Murphy Crow was excellent. Um, you know, and Emer Consign is very solid at full back there. And uh, out of those four players, Emer's the only one really who can play full back. So yeah. I'm not sure if we will see a change there, although I'm, I guarantee you a lot of people will be calling for Baven, and, you know, I'd have no disagreements with that. I would like to see. A change um, in the halfback pairing. I think this, as I said, we're going to France. They always have huge crowds. It's it's loud. It's scary. And for me, I think uh, it would be much better to have someone with experience in there at the nine position to be able to um, get our pack moving around and doing their job. And it's, there's nothing on Avian Riley. It's purely just that old saying of you know horses for courses. Um, mm -hmm. We, I just think personally, we need a little bit more experience in there. Again, Nicole hasn't played much at 10, so, you know, herself and Catherine Dane will know each other really well. And I would like to see them at 9 and 10. But it wouldn't surprise me if Greg stuck with his guns and stuck with his squad and went, I, I believe in you players. I'm going to give you another opportunity to perform because I don't think you did last week as well as you could have. So show me and at like, you know... He's, I, I, he could back them to go mm -hmm. go and show me why I picked you again and show me that you deserve to have this green jersey. But uh, I, I would maybe have Baven in there somewhere um, and have Catherine Dane in there too. And coming up against a team like France, like as a player, what's the main things you're going to be watching out for? France, as I said, and they are hugely physical, but they're not just physical. They are mobile and they are strong and they are skillful. And... You know, from players 1 to 23, they all can pass, they all can tackle, they all can offload, um, and they will hurt you. They are renowned for their uh, quick tempo when they want to and their double tackles. So, like, Wales gave us opportunities to offload in that game because they didn't have as many double tackles. France won't give us as many opportunities because they will hit us hard and that offloading game will not be there. So we really need to make sure that our footwork pre-contact is good in order to avoid those uh, double tackles and then hold on to possession because France will hurt you. They score numerous tries off first phase and turnover ball because they are just really, really quick to pick it up. They run great support lines um, and they work very, very hard. And, and they just love playing rugby. If you watch them, they have smiles on their faces. They love it. Um, but they have some very, very clever players who will pick you apart if you make mistakes. And we have a clip now of Maeve O'Gallery, who's in camp with the Ireland team ahead of their game to France. After the game the other day, we'll obviously just get straight into it. It obviously was a loss. What was the mood after it? 
I mean, I suppose that the main theme was probably a little bit of disappointment. You know, you have a home crowd like that of over 6,000 people and all those girls are kind of watching on. So, you know, I know the girls um, were disappointed not to be able to deliver that win. But I also think there's a lot of excitement around camp and just being like, we were able to show the people of Ireland, you know, what's what's in store for this team. And obviously we have to be patient with it. We have a new coach, you know, lots of new girls in. So I think there was a mixture of a bit of disappointment, but also excitement looking into the future and excitement to show like after just, you know, like a couple of weeks together, that's what we can do. So, you know, we're growing and kind of onwards and upwards. So we're, we're still looking forward. And what did you think yourself of the game watching it? Yeah, I just thought it was so exciting. I mean, obviously we were in a tough spot being in defence the whole time. You know, you 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 you're exhausted from defending. So I thought I would have loved to see more attacking opportunities for us. Um, but that's what we can hopefully bring forward into next weekend. And you know, we have some unbelievable players on that team. Like, and I just think once we get into attack, we can show more of the world what we can do. So I would just love to see us in attack more. But I think there was lots of promising stuff in that game. And then throughout the whole lead up to the Six Nations, you've obviously been in the middle of it, new coaches, new players. What's that whole experience been like? Yeah, it's it's unreal and it's surreal. It's it's such a it's so amazing to be able to be a part of a set up an organization like that. I mean, the management we have are they're excellent and you can learn so much from them. Um, even like having Neve Briggs in there, she's a past player, so she knows exactly how it works. So it's so great to have someone like her to as a kind of like a fountain of knowledge and she understands it from the player side as well. Um, and then just the group of girls we have in there. I think there's something really special in this squad. Um, so it's it's fantastic to be able to kind of learn from each other. And you know, a lot of us have played against each other. Um, obviously, like there's lots of girls from Railway, Blackrock and Bows and Belbo and all that so it's it's great to be able to actually play alongside each other instead of against each other um so it's, it's really really exciting and I just can't wait to keep going and keep growing and you're obviously new enough to the whole setup only making your debut there last November what's it been like to you know suddenly be playing with all these elite players like you're obviously only young just 22 yeah it's it's so exciting like obviously my first cap was such an amazing experience and I suppose coming into camp now it's just always always a kind of for me about learning and growing like I want to just be a sponge when I go into into camp with being surrounded by like all those different amazing players so for me it's just always trying to learn and grow but also just really enjoying the experience and you know like soaking up what's kind of happening around me and you know the elite level that we're like lucky enough to be able to train at and train the players we've been able to train with and the elite facilities we've, we've been able to train in I think it's just trying to soak it all in enjoy it but also just learn keep learning and we've obviously seen you already on like the at the fourth posters you got your own cup with your face on it what's that like yeah it's so, it's so cool and you know like I get these random texts from people being like oh my god you're on my coffee cup or oh I saw you in the program here so it's it's really lovely and it's it's really nice that you know the, the women's team are able to get that much kind of coverage and I think it's something that's been coming for years and obviously there's so much more to come from it in terms of visibility but to be able to just get get our faces and get the young girls of Ireland being able to kind of see that happening see their you know hopefully we can be role models for them and for them to be able to kind of see it in their everyday life I think that's really important so yeah it's really nice and exciting. And then for this Saturday's game you're obviously heading into camp at the moment what do you think is going to be the main areas of focus you're going to work on? Yeah, I think just, you know, just developing and growing the game that we're trying to play, that kind of fast ball, quick rocks. Um, of course, we're like hoping to get into more attacking situations this week and kind of clearing up that set piece as well. I think that's going to be huge this weekend, playing against a really, you know, kind of physical and skilled France side. Um, and I think, of course, getting our penalty count down is going to be absolutely crucial. Um, we won't get away with that this weekend at all so I think just focusing on ourselves getting our fast pace up and just growing the kind of game that you know Greg is implementing for our team and you know just executing that this weekend I think is is just our key focusing on our performance so obviously we're still a new team and you know we're still learning and growing together so if we can focus on performance that's, that's, that's it. And then France are obviously a very dominant team. It's going to be a very tough game. Are you heading in with a sort of game plan or is there something you want to achieve from the game itself? Yeah, well, I can't tell you too much now, but um, I think that our focus really is on ourselves. Like we know that France are going to be, you know, a tough team. You know, they're, 
they've got professional girls there so of course it's it's going to be a tough one and I think any team coming up against them in this Six Nations is going to <clears throat> kind of feel the same as well so I think as long as we're focusing on ourselves and you know putting our or game plays and or kind of like our beliefs into practice and into play and just going out there with with the like we need to believe so just going out there with that belief and you know like we have a, an excellent team of rugby players just going out and playing some rugby so I think we know it's going to be tough but we're just going to focus on ourselves and for yourself heading over to France it's probably one of your first away games with the 15s team what's the excitement like that to to travel to the stadium yeah I mean it's it's obviously all new experiences so I'm kind of just soaking it all up um but in terms of of like the way we're going to prepare it's just going to be the same and as if we're kind of back in Ireland you know you have your captain's run you'll have your your kind of snack tables in the evenings your meetings and mobility in the mornings so it's it's just an added I suppose an added bit of excitement onto it but it will it will definitely won't take away from the like the focus on on the game and the task that we have at hand this weekend. We heard there from Mae Vogue about heading over to France. There's obviously a couple of key areas they're going to be looking at. She was looking at it, you know, the rooks, not letting that penalties. For you, what do you expect them to be doing in training these days? Yeah, look, again, I think the easiest fix there is the penalty count. You know, that's just discipline from each individual player. Um, you know, and if, if you want to get anywhere near this French side um, you know, or sneak a victory, you need to keep that penalty count down. But um, I think they'll be working a lot on their set piece and their exits this week because, again, you just don't want to be given easy ball to France because they will hurt you constantly. Um, you know, and France themselves weren't particularly good last weekend against Italy. I think they had 20-plus handling errors, which is... Very, very unusual still. They'll be coming out looking to rectify things as well. And we just don't want to be giving them any opportunities uh, to, to get a score um, on us. And they can be extremely dangerous if we let them. So set piece needs to be tightened up a lot. Um, obviously, uh, previously mentioned the mall defence probably got a bit of work too. And, and exits, just making sure that if we are trying to clear our line, because France will bring massive line speed, that we choose really, really good kicking options for our exits or you know, what type of kicks we're choosing in terms to, to slow down that French, um, that defensive line coming at us. And, and that will give us a little bit more time and attack. And you said last week that you wanted some good competitive rugby. Do you think we got that last weekend? Yeah, absolutely. Like it really was a competitive game. There was, you know, that kind of who's going to win it towards the end. Both teams are very much in it the whole way through. And that's what you really like to see. And um, I think in the other games, England, Scotland started out really, really well and competitively, but ultimately England ended up dominating overall. And same with the France Italy game. And um, Italy were kind of in it for the little while, and while France weren't playing too well, you know, that sport, but ultimately they also pulled away. So we did have that competitive game, and hopefully we get more of that uh, this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. And in terms of competitive rugby and your best players, we're going to now do your fantasy rugby team. So who do you have on your dream team, as it were? Look, if I had unlimited budget, my team would be very, very different. But unfortunately, the fantasy team does have a budget. So, um, yeah, looking towards this weekend, I've got... Um, Ellie Kildun from England at fullback. I think she's electric. She's just back from injury. She had a great game last week and she was subbed. I was very dis a lot of my players were subbed last week. I was very disappointed. Um, but Maybe yeah. you like an underdog player. Yeah, I don't know. But I, so we have Ellie Kildun. I think she's a really, really good feat. She can carve open defences. Um, I have Amy Lee Murphy Crow in there on one week and Jazz Joyce on, on the, the other wing. Um, Jazz Joyce was top point scorer uh, for me last week, unfortunately, I suppose, for, from an Irish perspective. Um, and Lee obviously scored a try. She's well capable of finding that try line. I had her as captain last week, and again, she was subbed. Um, but that's the kind of faith I have in her. In the centres, I've gone for Eve Higgins um, and Emily Scarrett. Scarrett again, um, she got subbed, she's only back from a broken leg at the start of the season but she's an incredible player, she's been a stalwart for England for years and she takes their kicks as well so some handy extra points. Uh, 9 and 10 I've gone all France so um, I've gone for Sansus and Druin uh, so again both highly experienced players hoping they're going to get me 
loads of points, but <laughs> not too many. <laughs> like it's really, really hard to pick. And um, back row, I've gone for uh, Adele McMahon from Ireland. Thought she did excellent last week. Made loads of tackles. Get you loads of points. Does all the dirty work that people don't see. Jade Conkle, the Scotland number eight, fantastic player, big leader for them. Um, and Emmeline Gross from France as well, just excellent back row player. And I think that's a really good balance between the three of them. Second row, I've gone for Sam Monaghan. You know, I'm hoping she gets a few more offloads in there, maybe sneaks over for a try herself. But she gets loads of points for winning lineouts, which is good at and same. Emma Wassell from Scotland as well, just have a bit of representation in there. Uh, I made a huge mistake last week in that I picked Rose Bernadou from France in the front row and she wasn't even in the squad and she got me zero points and I was raging but I've yet to see if she's available. I have her in my team for right now because she's an incredible front row player for France and a real leader but if she's not there I'm going to put Linda Dujang in there and um, she's a good friend of mine so she'd be delighted with me. Uh, Lark Davies from uh, England at Hooker. They do a lot of mall tries, so I'm hoping she gets on the end of a couple of those. And then Sarah Byrne as a front row. I don't know how she does it, but as a front row, she's one of the most mobile players I've seen. And again, she's going to rack up some big points for me. So I'm very confident this week that I'm going to do well because in the Her Sport League, <laughs> I, I didn't actually do so well last week, primarily because I had players who got me zero points. And on your bench, who do you have to come on and make that impact? Um, I had Helen Nelson from Scotland, um, and then my budget was starting to run out a little bit, but I had Catherine Dane at nine from Ireland, and who did I have as my... Oh, Baven Parsons, obviously, on the bench. So... I'm going to wait to see what teams come out. Might have to make a few tweaks for them. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't been right on many things. Well. <laughs> yeah, I have been right on many things this week. So we'll see how we go. I would happily be wrong on all this to take an Irish victory the weekend or any, even an Irish performance. Mm -hmm. So looking ahead to this Saturday, what's your score prediction for France and Ireland? <sighs> yeah, look, um, I suppose being realistic about this weekend, um, it's hard to look past a, a France victory and a, a comprehensive France victory. And believe me, I would happily eat my words uh, if, if there was a, an Irish uh, victory there. I would love to see it, but I, I just don't think we're quite there yet, you know, and I do think they'll win quite well. I'm really hoping Ireland put in a good performance, but I do think... You know, it could be something like 36-12 to Ireland, or to, sorry, to France. Mm -hmm. Now, believe me, like, I would love for that to be wrong, and I really hope the players can do it, but I just don't think we're quite there yet. Remember, France are building for this World Cup. They're huge, huge contenders. They have, uh, you know, professional contracts, all that sort of stuff, and they're just slightly ahead of us at the minute. And do you think Ireland's confidence would have been knocked by the loss against Wales? Because I suppose, as you said, it's not like we would have been expecting a win against France. But do you think the fact we didn't even get the one against Wales will affect our performance? Yes and no. I suppose there's different ways you can look at it. Like the girls will be disappointed and they'll be hoping to rectify that. Um, some of them will look back on say, maybe some mistakes they made or things they wish they had done differently. But... I don't think they'll be thinking about that coming into the France game because it's completely different. Nothing they did in that game last week will if, will change what happens in this game this week. Like you know, all they need to do is take their learnings from that match and apply that in this French match. And you know, it's one of those where you need to nearly compartmentalize, leave that Welsh uh, loss behind, focus on this next game, and focus on putting on a performance. For me. I would not be focusing on the end result. I would literally be taking it minute by minute, you know, uh, one bit at a time, your first pass, your first tackle, your first kick, whatever it is, building from there and, and taking the moments as they come. And if we get a purple patch where we've uh, huge moments of, pr of pressure on France and we have them on the back foot, we need to really start showing them what our attack can do and taking our opportunities and getting some scores. I, I'd be really disappointed if we didn't get on the scoreboard uh, this weekend. And who would you expect to get over the line? You said earlier Sam Monaghan, you'd love, love her I'd love to, to because she's <laughs> on my fancy team and I thought she played really well. Like, and obviously that's great, but it is quite rare for a second row to score, to be honest. Um, but if she could, that'd be great. Um, but no, look, you, you never know. We end up, like, 
we actually have quite a good mall ourselves like you know so we could get an opportunity where we have a, a line out five meters out and someone like Neve Jones or Emma Hooban could be on the end of it but when you're looking for scores you, you, it's hard to look past the likes of Eve Higgins, Amy Lee Murphy Crow and um, Baven Parsons if she's on there you know Lucy Millhall all them but to be honest, I couldn't care less who scores the weekend if we get a few of them, you know. Uh, someone could get a hat-trick or we could share them out between everybody. I really don't mind. <laughs> and in terms of them, we have Italy and England. What's your score prediction for them? Yeah, again, look, Italy were, or England were utterly dominant uh, after a little bit of a slow start last week and they just have some incredible players. Abby Dow was exceptional for them and... You know, they might actually make a few changes this week just to give their squad some experience and build squad depth. But to be honest, I don't think that will impact their performance much, such as the depth that they have. Mm -hmm. Italy did quite well. Um, you know, they have some good players themselves, but they're not quite at England's level yet. So I'm going to say, and again, this is <laughs> tricky, but something like 47... 47-9 to England, mm -hmm. you know, but England, I think, will just run away with it and they'll be hard to stop. Do you think you're being, like, not generous enough there, maybe, with the score? I don't know. Like, England put 55, I think it was, on Scotland last mm -hmm. week and I said they would get to the 40s and 50s and it just depends, really, on the mood they're in. They just have finishers everywhere. Their prop scored, their back row scored, their nine scores, their winger scored. Like... Anyone for them can score, such as the opportunities they have and players off the bench have such an impact as well. I, I don't know. They could, put, like, they could easily put 70 points on a team if they were in the mood. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully not, not when they take on us. That's okay, not against Ireland. <laughs> put the points on it, it's fine. And then we have obviously Wales and Scotland. What do you think the projection will be there? I think this will be the most fascinating game of the weekend. Uh, obviously, we've seen Wales will be massively spurred on by that victory last weekend away from home you know Scotland shipped a heavy defeat they started brightly they got a nice try but um, in the end they were just completely overpowered this game will be a really tight affair before last weekend I would have given this to Scotland but I think Wales might edge it now and I'm going 21-19 I think this will be a very tight game Um but again, I'm hoping Wales can do me a favour here and I can at least get one prediction right. And then we talked about it a lot last week, but we haven't really touched on it today. Wales, obviously, last time they played, you were part of the team and we bet them significantly. They had no points on the board. Since then, they got their contracts and I suppose they kind of came over and proved everyone what investing in, in players can mean. What do you think that means for the Wales team to have won that game? Yeah, look... Again, there's a lot of different factors going on. Wales obviously got professional contracts. Ireland have had a completely transitional period, lost a lot of players, whereas Wales still have their core squad because of the World Cup. You know, we have a new coach, new systems, all that sort of stuff. They're all factors that played into it. But like for Wales, that turnaround is incredible. You know, they only scored two tries um, in the whole of the Six Nations last year and they relied heavily on Jazz Joyce to give them that forward momentum and go forward ball. Um, they had the highest, um, or their, one of their players had the highest tackle count last year. Such was the amount of possession, or the Defend lack of possession yeah. that they yeah. had, the amount of mm -hmm. defending they did. So, like last weekend's game was a huge turning point for them, and they'll be using that to kick on again. They're going to the World Cup. You know, for them to get two wins in a row potentially this weekend, that would be massive for them because they've had a bit of a steady decline over the last number of years. But um, it's great to see their progression, maybe not for Ireland, but for the game. Um, and maybe other teams are looking at that and going like, this is great to see for women's rugby. Mm -hmm. Imagine what other teams could do, you know, if they were afforded the same opportunity. But, you know, Ireland, um, they lost that game Saturday. They stayed in camp. They were back on work Monday. Wales didn't have that. So they'll have a very different week going into it than Ireland did, you know, and we'll see how that fares out when we look at the table at the end of the tournament. Mm -hmm. And then just ahead of this game on Saturday, good competitive rugby we want, but if there was, I suppose, even three takeaways you want from it, would it be less kicking, obviously more possession? What would you, what would you have For in the Ireland-France game in For particular? the Ireland-France game. Mm -hmm. um, 
a much tighter set piece like so the ability to hold on to the ball when we have it mm -hmm. uh, you know we don't want to be turning over ball very very easily um, lower penalty count absolutely gives us a chance um, and more attacks but again that comes with the other two if you're not giving away penalties and if you're not giving away ball at set piece you're more than likely going to have the ball for a lot longer so you know possession counts for everything if you have the ball France can't score mm -hmm. <laughs> simple as when you look at it that way and who who would you expect to that we would see this weekend that we didn't maybe see last week maybe more of Baven obviously as we were saying or is there anyone else I suppose we have to wait and see the team but is there anyone else you'd like to make a bigger impact just maybe not individually but I'd like to hope that the bench will have a much bigger impact this weekend as a whole you know and they come on to provide much needed energy and just to see out the game and bring that kind of calmness and that steadiness and you know someone like Hannah O'Connor would be really hoping to have a big impact this weekend and we're definitely going to need our bench because France are relentless and their tempo is huge and our players are going to tire quickly regardless of you know how well they're playing so our bench are going to have a big impact and I really want to see that because it is a squad like we are a squad it's not down to one individual so if we can work as a team and and have that impact have that change in energy and and really change the game a little bit that'd be great to see mm -hmm. so utilizing our bench working on that set piece giving away less penalties all heading into the game on Saturday absolutely so this has been episode two of the Her Sports Six Nations show brought to you in association with Opal, the exclusive car partner to the IRFU. You can catch up on this episode and every episode in the series on YouTube and our social channels or listen to the podcast on every podcast app. Her Sports Six Nations show in association with Opal.